In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is Friday, December the 4th, 2020. We look at the powerful Psalm number 68, where we see the conquering Messiah, conquering on behalf of His Church, uh, the body of Christ, that He redeemed by His precious blood. It's a beautiful Psalm. I, I recommend that you uh, read it and see for yourself the beauty embedded within the Psalm. We're just going to look at some of the verses in it real quickly together. It says, Let God rise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Um, when you think of these words, you think of the meaning of the resurrection. The, the Lord rises. His enemies, the devil and his hosts, all those who denied him, who didn't believe in him, are scattered. They cannot stand before his awesome glory, his power. The righteous are glad. Can you imagine when the Lord Jesus descended into Hades and led captivity captive, as it says in the Psalm later, and what He did for humanity by redeeming us. We look at the next couple of verses. It says, A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in His holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. Think of those again, those who are bound by death, by Hades, we're bound with no hope of anything without the precious shedding of the blood of Christ our Lord on the cross. They were led into prosperity after being bound by the shackles of death and sin. You can think of that beautiful icon of the resurrection where the Lord Jesus is depicted by carrying Adam and Eve from their wrists out of hates and all those who believed and hoped in His glorious appearing. It says later on in the psalm, You, O God, sent a plentiful rain, whereby you confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation dwelt in it. You, O God, provided from your goodness for the poor. Again, the plentiful rain, the pouring of God's grace, the pouring of the Holy Spirit for those who are poor. That's why the Lord says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Those who are poor realize that they are poor without Jesus, that they are made rich by Christ, by faith in Christ. It says, The Lord gave the word, Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee, they flee. They flee from the awesome power of God. The devil could not do anything when the Lord Jesus broke through the gates of Hades. And that's why that beautiful verse when the Lord Jesus told St. Peter, You are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Nothing will prevail against the awesome love and power and conquering of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. It says later in the psalm, you have ascended on high, you have led captivity captive. Again, that ascension that the Lord does 40 days after the resurrection. And we also remember that how he ascended out of Hades after descending into it for our salvation to redeem us, how he led captivity captive. Blessed be the Lord, later on it says, who daily loads us with benefits. To remind ourselves that every day the Lord Jesus Christ loads us, loads us with benefits. He is abundant in generosity and glory abundant in His love for us. He loads us daily with benefits. The God of our salvation, our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. He is the one who saves us from death. He is our salvation, our Savior. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen, O God, what you have done for us. A reminder that what the Lord has done for us, let it be renewed daily. We ask Him to renew a right spirit within us every day. Later on, the psalm concludes with, Ascribe strength to God, His excellence over Israel, and His strength is in the clouds. O God, You are more awesome than Your holy places. All the beauty of the church, all the beauty of the holy places is beautiful, but is beautiful truly by the presence of God in it. He is more awesome than all of these things. The God of Israel is He who gives strength, strength and power to His people. He is the one who gives strength and power to His people. Blessed be God. Father Tadros Malati gives us some beautiful commentary on the meanings of the psalm. He says, There was a controversy initially among scholars as to the occasion of writing the psalm. Some believed that it was written by David to commemorate the victories over the enemies of his country as a whole. Others believed that it was written to commemorate certain victories mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 19 and 2 Samuel chapter 12. While others believed that he wrote it to be sung during moving the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed-Edom in Kirj of Jerim back to Jerusalem. This psalm is the fourth and the last of the series of psalms of praise from 65 to 68. 
sung by the prophet David when his soul was shaken with joy for God the conqueror and his church as the procession of exaltation set forth to move the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed, Edom to the city of David, as mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 6. David's heat together with his mind and all his energies was moved to see God the conqueror working in his church along the eras to bring her forth to the eternal heavenly procession. As he worked in the past, he will continue working in the present. And that's what the Lord said, my father has been working until now and I have been working. And in the future, until he grants her the conquest over the darkness and all the hosts of the evil enemy. While celebrating a church and a public procession, David saw God the king leading his people through Moses and Aaron to liberate them from the bondage of the Pharaoh and to help them pass through the wilderness and all its troubles, temptations, and wars, to bring them forth to the land of comfort, the promised land. That is concerning the past, but concerning the salvific work of God, the prophet David, by the eye of prophecy, saw the Lord Christ, the word of God, crucified, resurrected, and ascended to heaven to bring us forth through the sufferings, death, and burial to the power of his resurrection and to the deposit of the heavenly glory. It is therefore a messianic psalm that reveals the salvation presented by the Lord Christ to the whole world. It prophesies as well about the receiving of faith by the Gentiles, the resurrection of the Lord Christ from the dead, and his ascension to the heaven of heavens, as well as about the privileges of the church of the new covenant. The Apostle Paul quoted some of the verses of this psalm in his epistles and considered them to be realized in Jesus Christ, if you see, as you see in Ephesians chapter 4. We continue looking at these beautiful eschatological views or what is to come as to the future David saw the ultimate procession of conquest when the king comes in his glory over the clouds to embrace his church to bring her forth into the bosom of his father and to enjoy the perfection of the eternal glory. It says here also features in the psalm as Father Tadros tells us it starts by the words of the prophet Moses who used to say whenever the Ark of the Covenant would depart. You would say, Rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. As I mentioned, Numbers chapter 10. Later on, we see also the movement of the Ark in it, the power of the resurrection of the Lord Christ. It presents us a living portrait of the church, exultant by the Spirit for enjoyment of dwelling of Christ, the conqueror within her. He is the Christ of the fatherless, the widow, the needy, as we mentioned in one of those key verses. We also believe that it's rather difficult to interpret, some, some of the people would say that it was difficult to interpret the Psalm Dudu's symbolic and allegorical expressions. But others would say it represents a marvelous prophecy about the Lord Christ. The church quotes some of its verses to be used in the praise during the month of Kiak, which is the Advent month in preparation for Christmas. We chant parts of the Psalm uh, during the, the praises of the month of Kiak that speak about the coming of the Lord Christ and His salvation in preparation for the Feast of the Nativity. So, in conclusion, we saw in this psalm all the history of salvation from the fall of Adam and Eve and the journeys of man where the Lord never left us behind, always sent prophets until He finally came Himself for salvation to redeem us unto the heavenly glories. The, beautiful, the beauty of this psalm also is because it concerns the resurrection of the Lord Christ, who grants us to arise together with Him and to carry His conquest on the devil and all the hosts of darkness and presents to us the conquest over the last enemy, namely death. The psalmist quoted this verse from the prophet Moses, as we mentioned earlier. According to St. Augustine, the enemies here are those who deny Christ, who could not oppose Him, nor endure to appear before Him on the great day of the Lord, when they would say to the mountains to fall over them and to the hills to cover them before the face of Him who sits on the throne. Whereas the true believers will enjoy His presence among them as the source of their happiness, joy, and protection. It is therefore befitting us, before any movement we make, to seek from the Lord to precede us, to hide behind Him and in Him, as we are not a party in the battle, whose two sides are God and the devil. We have no personal enemies, and we do not seek our revenge against anyone, but we seek the intervention of God Himself and His leadership of the battle against the devil. And that's why the psalm is so beautiful and packed with so much power and so many beautiful expressions of what the Lord has done for us, the great things He has accomplished for us, His children, His body in the world, that He died for and rose for. May God grant us to always be triumphant. As St. Paul says, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. May God grant us to always be the victory in Him and see the victory in Him that we may be united with Him now and ever and unto the ages of all ages. Amen.